This is a Chinese 3D touch probe that I bought off of eBay. Uh, hopefully you don't do this uh, when I was learning how to use the probing software. I asked it to go touch off on a Z and then I fat fingered something anyway. It drove it all the way into the workpiece and bent the probe over. And it would be okay if it just ruined the probe, but it also, inside the probe, there's a little spider piece that the probe screws to. Uh, one thing to comment about this probe is that it uses an M2.5 millimeter thread for the probe, which is pretty non-standard. Most probes are an M4 thread or there are an M2 thread. And so uh, I think the probe, you only get one option for the length of this, and it's about half the price of what the 3D Touch Probe cost initially. So what I was going to do, I'm gonna take this apart real quick and show you what the inside of it looks. There are other YouTube videos that show it in a lot more detail. But what I'm going to do is just take this apart real quick. The piece that broke is actually a piece of acetyl homopolymer, otherwise commonly known as Dalrin. At least that's what the eBay listing, it has an exploded view of this probe, and that's what it says the material is. So if we take it apart, uh, you can see here we have the spider. And the spider has three two millimeter diameter pins that are about eight millimeters long. They're gold plated, which I'm sure improves the contact reliability of this. Uh, a lot of the other passive probes, for instance, I've got a Tormach passive probe that it didn't have gold plated contacts. They instead used an electrical uh, grease that kept the surfaces from corroding, and in theory that was good enough. So these pins are not terribly pressed in. They can be pulled out with, uh, if you use like a spring collet, you can clamp down on the pin and then pull it out. And so my idea is to make it a new piece or a, a series, a family of new parts that you can replace this piece with that allow you to either use an M2 probe, an M4 probe. If you had a Hamer uh, probe that you've broken, you can, there's a version of it that you can put a Hamer probe in, uh, a version that has a stem on it that you bond a ball bearing to, um, so I'm going to offer those through Shapeways. So I'm using a little ER11 uh, collet to pull these pins out without marring the gold coating, hopefully. So just uh, put it in there, tighten up the chuck, and then kind of gently twist on it comes out. You could probably use a drill chuck if you wanted. However, that might be a little bit more inclined to mar it than, than the, a spring collet. But pretty quick to get the three pins out. What is going to be offered on safe on Shapeways is a single part that breaks apart easily and it's going to have 10 different probe mounts that are in it and it is a, a sample pack until the market users uh, kind of figure out what works best so i've got another cnc and different probes i've got a hammer probe i've got a, a tormach passive probe so i've got a bunch of different pieces so i'm going to start with uh so 
there will be, so the M2.5 probe, if you happen to break your probe and didn't actually break the metal piece, there will be uh, a plastic part that you can tap with an M2.5 thread. You'll probably have to get that tap. It's, uh, you can get them on eBay for about $7. Uh, then I will also have an M2 uh, mount that if you want to go to an M2 style probe with a two millimeter thread on the end, that'll work. Uh, you know, this is a ruby tipped M4 probe that is probably the most common kind of probe. For instance, it comes with the, the, the Tormach Passive probe uses an M4 thread, and you just you'll have to tap the M4 thread, and then you can screw in an M4 probe. And oh, I guess I'll leave them. This is the Hamer probe, which has a little barbed shaft with a chamfer on it and it can break the the probe if it's unintentionally put on an axial load so you'll just uh, push it in here if it uh, probably want to drill it a little oversized and then use super glue this is probably just a little bit too tight and uh, See if this one pushes in a little bit easier. I don't need to drill that out some more. But anyway, so the, those probes would be like that. Um, then we have a 5 16 ball. So this is a training version where I've 3D printed the ball. It has some slits in the shaft to facilitate buckling under a load and it'll break. And then it has some pieces that are cut out in the middle here. So that if it hits too high a side load, it'll break off. And when it's done, you can tap this out and do an M4 on it. So uh, if you have a 5 16 ball bearing, then you bond it on the end of this. Then another probe that we have is, this is a four millimeter ball on the end of it and it's a training probe as well. And then you would have a, another one that you can actually bond a four millimeter ball bearing on the end that's very hard. So after you figured out how to not break probes anymore, uh, what else is there? I think that's it. I'm gonna do the big training probe just to, uh, you know, this is quite a bit bigger than what the probe originally came with. And it actually, uh, so when you get the parts, you may have to chase these holes with a 0.0785 drill. That's a little under two millimeters. And, and then, you should be able to push the pins in. See, that's kind of a nice tight fit, slip fit, and push the other one in. And so now we've got basically the spider and we take this piece here. This is a little silicon rubber seal and this will push through the seal like that. And then you can Push it the rest of the way to get it down on the contactor balls. And then <clears throat> I need to have the spring on top. Well, quite Let's see. So that's there the spring on this and it goes on like this. This would be a lot easier if I put some marks on the housing so I could tell 
easily which way it was supposed to go. Uh, I guess I got it 180 degrees out. card didn't fall apart the last time I tried to do it okay there we go out together and you can put the screws in it again. have to center it up of course but if you suffer the same experience that I did which is unintentionally breaking your probe this could be a way for you to uh, repair it and then also be able to go away from kind of this non-standard probe to the probe of your choice or whatever you might a probe that you might already have lying around well with a little bit of fiddling i was able to the spindle on my router has about two thousandths of run out and so i, I was able to uh let's make sure that i've got this any better than two thousandths on this is isn't really necessary since there's that there is that much run out in the spindle but i'm kind of surprised that my 199 dollar sla resin printer actually printed it that closely so this is a big win the shapeways printing process uh the printer's probably a half million dollar printer so it's probably very accurate compared to my 199 dollar one so just to show you, the green light means that the probe hasn't it touched. When it touches, it goes red. So that's, that's good.